Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. Well, we now have the blueprint for the violent insurrection from the far-right gang, the Proud Boys, and it uncannily matches up in specific detail with what actually transpired on January 6th. Today, we got the first look at the document titled 1776 Returns, when the lawyer for the Philadelphia president of the Proud Boys included it in a federal court filing. We heard mention of this document in previous indictments against members of the Proud Boys, some of who were charged with seditious conspiracy last week. Prosecutors revealed that an individual whose identity is known to the grand jury sent this blueprint to Proud Boys leader Enrique Tarrio on December 30th, 2020. Now, one way to think about the attempted coup, and I think it's uh, the way the committee is discussing it, the way that we've discussed it here in this program, sort of broadly two different efforts that merged on January 6th, right? There was Trump and his circle, the people around him who were pro-coup, attempting to overthrow the rightfully elected president, Joe Biden, to keep Donald Trump in power. They were trying to use every government mechanism they had at their disposal that they could muster, including the fake elector scheme, pushing the Department of Justice to announce investigations of, of, of claims of fraud, pressuring Mike Pence not to certify the results on January 6th, and on and on and on, right? That's all the governmental activity that they're trying. Then on that day, January 6th, that effort merged with the efforts of violent extremist right-wing mobs. Those groups, which include the Proud Boys, had their own plan to use force to topple the government. I mean, topple the incoming government, right? Preserve Donald Trump in power. And while we all saw the same thing, we all know exactly what happened on January 6th, there's some on the right who have tried, disingenuously and preposterously to my mind, uh, to downplay the brutality of January 6th. We hated seeing vandalism at the U.S. Capitol a year and a half ago, and we said so at the time. But we did not think it was an insurrection because it was not an insurrection. It was not even close to an insurrection. Not a single person in the crowd that day was found to be carrying a firearm, some insurrection. Okay, first of all, uh, what's the royal we? Is he King Lear? Second of all, that's not true. Multiple people have been charged with allegedly bringing guns on the Capitol grounds on January 6th, so not a single person, not true. But as January 6th committee laid out last week, just to be clear here, the violent extremists and their detailed plans to use force were a key part of the attempted coup. And they were clearly in sync with Donald Trump. Here's an exhibit the committee played in its first hearing. What do you want to call him? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacists and would white you like me to condemn? White proud supremacists boys. and right proud, proud boys. boys. Stand back and stand by. Would you say that Proud Boys numbers increased after the stand back, stand by comment? Exponentially. I'd say tripled probably with the potential for a lot more eventually. And did you ever st sell any stand back and stand by merchandise? Uh, one of the vendors on my page actually beat me to it, but I wish I would have, I wish I would have made a stand back, stand by shirt. On December 19th, President Trump tweeted about the January 6th rally and told attendees, be there, we'll be wild. Many of the witnesses that we interviewed were inspired by the president's call and came to DC for January 6th. But the extremists, they took it a step further. They viewed this tweet as a call to arms. A day later, the Department of Justice describes how the Proud Boys created a chat called the Ministry of Self-Defense Leadership Chat. Uh, in this chat, the Proud Boys established a command structure in anticipation of coming back to D.C. on January 6th. The Department of Justice describes Mr. Tario coming into possession of a document called the 1776 Returns, which describes uh, individuals occupying key buildings around the United States Capitol. Now, again, there's these people who, again, I think disingenuously, preposterously are saying, oh, it wasn't an insurrection. This was just to be clear here. The Proud Boys own model for January 6th was explicitly rev revolution, which is, of course, the use of force and violence to overthrow a government and an insurrection. Well, that's just a revolution that fails. Right. That's why we call it an insurrection. It didn't work. Thank God. Just look at the language they use, the references they make in this document. First of all, it's titled 1776 Returns. The year of this country's founding gets thrown around a lot. But what the document references here is more than just rhetorical calls for liberty. They are advocating for what the founders did, right? The founders took up arms and violently overthrew the British government. There is an even more specific reference to revolution. The author of the document titled the first section intended for internal use only, quote, storm the winter palace. Now, if you don't get that reference, um, 
In 1917, Vladimir Lenin's armed mob of Bolsheviks captured the Winter Palace. They stormed it. That was then the home of the provisional Russian government, and it was the key moment in the revolution. It ultimately led to the creation of the Soviet Union, Lenin coming to power. And again, when you go back and read the history of the storm of the Winter Palace, it, it was sort of similar. Like, big mobs kind of overran the folks that were in there and took the building. Okay? These touch points, again, the American Revolution 1776, the Russian Revolution 1917, those are the examples of the people that wrote this document, in this document. It's evident in the clear plan it lays out. The document states its overall goal is to fill buildings with patriots, communicate our demands. The authors list their targets, including Senate and House office buildings and the Supreme Court. They lay out their specific manpower needs, saying they must have a, quote, minimum of 50 patriots for each building, or it's a no-go. The document's overview of January 6th, which they refer to as Execution Day, plans for, quote, recruiters in the streets, distributing printed and digital copies of the Patriot Plan, garnishing support from those attending rally. Now, that's interesting, right? They realize we need a bunch of people to pull this off. We're not enough. So that rally they're referencing would be, of course, the Stop the Steal rally at the Ellipse, where Donald Trump played the role of the recruiter. As said in the plan, he spoke to the crowd, riled it up, and then told them all to go to the Capitol. At last week's hearing, filmmaker Nick Quested testified he was with a group of Proud Boys as they walked the streets before the rally. Part two, execution, begins with, quote, ensuring crowd outside is full and ready to go. The goal is to ensure there is an entry point for the masses to rush into the building. Well, again, that is exactly what we saw happen on January 6th. When a large crowd had gathered at the Capitol... A proud boy smashed open a window, allowing the first members of the mob to stream inside. The second section of 1776 returns is what they call the Patriot Plan Logistics, intended for release to the public. It begins with a motivational statement, quote, you are the revolution, be a part of history and fight for our, this country so our children don't have to. Then it lays out a timeline that was right in line with the actual events as they happened on January 6th, 1 p.m., meet at location one. That is when the first wave of the mob broke through police barriers on the Capitol grounds. 1.22 p.m., are enough people around? More and more rioters were gathering. 1.30 p.m., wait for a signal from lead, storm building. Mob broke in just after 2 p.m. We now have a great breadth of knowledge about this plot, its culmination on January 6th. It comes from this document, all the video, the testimony from the January 6th committee, the reporting. In fact, it now makes sense. The committee led with all the Proud Boy evidence during the first hearing. A lot of what happened leading up to and on that day has been established. But to me, there's one outstanding question remains. I don't know the answer. I don't know if we'll get an answer. But basically, the, the outstanding question is this. What are the connections between these two efforts? Right? I mean, we saw them in real time. The president functioned as the recruiter. In that day, he invited people to Capitol. He provided the Proud Boys with a crowd, right? But what's the connect? Is there other connections? Are there other connections, right? The, the plot coming from the White House and Trump and these extremist groups, how much interaction did they have? How close were they? 